Welcome to the first of our PIC 18F 14K50 tutorial series based in the C language instead of assembly. Now we're doing this because the PIC 10F 200 series, which was based in assembly, was so popular and because Sergey is amazing. So unlike in the PIC 10F 200 where we went into the minutia of the microcontroller and understood the registers and how everything went, we're now moving away from that more theoretical to the more practical where we're gonna have a microcontroller that has a lot more memory space, a lot more features, a lot more peripherals that you can use to create many more practical applications. Not to say that you can't do a lot of very practical things with a PIC 10F200, but you can do even more with this and usually a lot simpler. So the PIC 18F 14K50 is, has quite a few more pins than the PIC 10F200. And besides just more pins, it has 15 GPIOs and it has 16 kilobytes of flash memory and 768 bytes of RAM. Now it goes up to 48 megahertz of the clock frequency and you have either one bit timer or three 16 bit timers. So you have several timers to choose from if you'd like. It has a 10 bit ADC, dual rail to rail comparator, a uh, master synchronous serial port MSSP module that can work with both SPI and I squared C or SPR and I2C. Also has the UART or the EUSART module and is capable of full speed and high speed USB device um, interfaces. So it has a lot of different options for what you want to do in hardware versus trying to bit bang it into it in software. So I do want to break down a little bit of what the series is going to look like just so you have a good idea. Sometimes we've gotten comments in the uh, in YouTube where people say, oh, could you explain this line to me? And I think that's because we haven't communicated properly that this is the other half of the tutorial series. The video tutorial that I will be doing, not only now, but for the rest of the series, works hand in hand with Sergey's written tutorial. And whereas here I will go over high level concepts and I will pull out different, uh, different points that I think are confusing and try to explain them and try and use this video medium as well as I can, you're going to get a lot out of that written tutorial. A lot of questions are going to be answered there because the way Sergey approaches these tutorials is he says, here's the problem. Here's how we're going to solve it. Here's what we're going to use, usually some sort of device like a temperature sensor. He goes into the communication protocol, explains the protocol, explains what you have to worry about. Then he talks about how the entire program is going to be structured. And then finally, he goes through his programs line by line, describing exactly why he's doing everything he's doing. So if while watching this, you have any specific questions, definitely go check out the written tutorial. Sergey goes super in depth. There is a huge amount of information in those tutorials that you should check out. So now that I've spent a long time talking about how amazing those written tutorials are, and I could spend even more time on that, let's go back into this tutorial and talk about what we are going to be doing in this series. So this time, instead of finding the smallest, cheapest microcontroller we could from Microchip, we decided to use another 8-bit microcontroller, but the PIC 18F 14K50, which is going to take a very long time for that to roll off my tongue because it certainly does not right now. Now, this is still a relatively small microcontroller. This is a DIP package there. And frankly, the DIP package is the largest of the packages, so you can get it quite a bit smaller, but this is a lot easier to breadboard. Now, the reason we chose this microcontroller is because it has a lot more features. So unlike the PIC 10F200, where we had to bit bang almost everything and create a software approach to any sort of communication or any sort of public public pulse width modulation. This has all of those features built in. So it has a has built in comparators, uh, built in PWM module, a SPI and I2C um, interface via master synchronous serial port, I2C, I squared C, I2C just sounds so dumb, uh, UART or I like to say UART because it's a lot easier to say than the EUSART, USART, and this thing even has USB capabilities. So it is a much more powerful, much more capable microcontroller. So besides this microcontroller, if you want to follow along in this series, you're going to need a couple of pieces of software and a couple of pieces of hardware. The software is pretty straightforward. It's the MPLAB 
IDE, MPLAB X IDE, and I'll go through the installation here. It's a very straightforward installation. And then you also need your XC8 compiler, which is what takes the code you write and makes it into something that the microcontroller can actually use. And that's about it from the software side. Now on the hardware side, if you do not already have these, you will need a Picket. Uh, I have the Picket 4 that I'll be using. Uh, Sergey has both a Picket 3 and a Picket 4, but he likes the Picket 3. So in the written tutorials, he'll probably be referencing his Picket 3 when it is referenced. You obviously need the microcontroller itself, which at this moment in 2022, there is a huge amount of chip shortages going out, so it may be a bit of a challenge. And Sergey provides a couple of different options that you can use if you can't find this particular microcontroller. He provided, I think, three or four other microcontrollers that will work just fine. Um, and those are on the website if you want to go find those. You will also obviously need a breadboard because you need a place to put all of this. And finally, you'll just need a random assortment of things like resistors, uh, buttons, switches, um, wires. And then we will have specific things that we will need on each tutorial. So if you get yourself set up with the breadboard, the microcontroller, your picket, some LEDs, switches, that'll get you through probably the first half dozen tutorials, but then we're going to start doing a little bit more complicated things. And right now, Sergey is on, well, he just finished tutorial number 20, uh, which is a PID controller using a resistor to heat up a sensor. It's actually a really fascinating uh, tutorial, um, but at that point, you will need quite a few other things. At this moment, if you want to do all of this, and you already have the picket, you probably can do everything for about $100. That seems to be about how much all of the equipment will cost to do all of these tutorials. So just keep that in mind. If something's too expensive, we did try and make it as cheap as possible, but if something's too expensive, you can still follow along and get as close as you want, and that is entirely up to you. And so with that, let's actually do the MPLAB XIDE walkthrough and just show that installation and get you ready to go. So this is pretty straightforward. Let's just go through the process and we can talk about it really briefly. There shouldn't be anything too surprising, um, though by the time you watch this, this version might be different. The same general concept should be applicable. So let's go next. I have read all of this in advance. Trust me, I did. And I'm accepting it just like everybody ever will. I, uh, I don't like getting emails, so I'm just going to take those out just because and I do not have a proxy, so if you do, you're gonna have to change that. And that directory looks great. So honestly, I'm not going to need the rest of these and I can go back and install these later. As it is, we're going to have to cut out a long time of this downloading, but I would like the MPLAB, MPLAB X IDE and the IPE. I haven't had a lot of success in the past of doing direct uploading to my microcontroller through the IDE, though it is entirely possible. And when it has worked for me, it's been fantastic, but I'd like the IPE there as well, just in case I need to use it. So and then we just click next, ready to begin installing, click next. And now we are going to be sitting here for a while. Okay, that was surprisingly painless. That was a lot faster than I was expecting. So I do not want to launch the MP Lab. X IDE at the moment, but I do need to get my XC compiler. So, and just as a reminder, your IDE is where you do your coding and it's just basically a tool that helps you. It, uh, it can identify uh, with color or whatever, where, like, you know, just helps you with the process of programming. Uh, as I tried to say there, it can color code different aspects of it. It can match your parentheses, so everything actually goes together and stuff like that, but it's not actually necessary. You can do all of this stuff in Notepad or any sort of text editor. So the IDE just makes your life a little bit simpler. The compiler is actually the piece that takes your code and turns it into something the microcontroller can use. So let's go get the compiler. Okay, now we want, we can go down to download MPLAB XC8. All right, compiler downloads, and I don't want Windows. Let's do Mac, because I am using a Mac, and I want the XC8. So I can go and download that, pretty small file. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
Uh, yes, Apple is very worried about their security, which I understand. It's nice sometimes and a real pain in the backside other times. So now we are installing the compiler and this will integrate nicely with the IDE if everything goes well. Once again, I am a super fast reader and I accept that agreement. And I only want the free mode. Um, if you get the workstation or the network client, you can get basically the pro mode and it offers you more features, uh, mostly in making your code even smaller. But for what we're doing, we don't need to mess with it. We can just do the free. And let's actually do both of these things. We want to apply settings to all users of this machine, even though only I use this laptop, and then add XC8 to the path environment variable. Now it's ready to begin installing. So once again, we will probably skip over this, even though it looks like it's gonna go pretty quick. Okay, so now it's gone through. I don't have an activation key and I'm not purchasing a license and I don't want an evaluation of the pro license either. So we can just go next, say it's done and fantabulous. So everything should be ready to go. Now I just need to open up my MP Lab X. Well, let's go to applications and find it there. Okay, and so I find my MP Lab IDE, not to be confused with the IPE. Double click and see how it works. Okay, so if you get to this point and you have the IDE and the XC8 uh, compiler installed, then you are ready for the second tutorial. All right, fantastic. So that's it with MP Lab, uh, with your MP Lab IDE and your XC8 compiler, you have all the software you need. If you already have a Picket because you did the Pic 10 F200 series with us, then fantastic. All you need is this Picket, microcontroller, breadboard, couple resistors, switches, LEDs, and you are off to the races. I'm very, very excited to get started. As soon as we're done with this, I'm going to be setting up for the next tutorial in which we will be messing with an LED and immediately doing more practical, interesting work. We hope you join us for this series because it's going to be an excellent ride. If you want to get notified whenever any of these or other tutorials get published, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Like this video. Have a great one. We'll see you in the next one.